Hi guys, I am doing a tutorial on how to paint a briar horse because I was asked. So I'm just going to paint it black. Here's the black I've got. So this this is my victim. That's pretty victimizing. Um, you know the bay stable mate sport horse? Yeah. I etched, I was going to start etching him and I was hearing him and everything, but now I'm going to use him as my victim. <laughs> so, you just get like some paint on, you get some paint on the paintbrush, don't get it wet or anything, because otherwise it'll get brush strokes. See the, and then you just start going. Make sure you spread it out, you, you can do one more layer, more than one layer. You just want to make sure you don't glob it up. So, here, let me turn on a lamp so you guys can see better. So, Melanie can see the demise of one of her favorite horses of mine. Let me watch that video, you know. Pardon? You also watch that video. Okay. I end up watching it, don't worry. And you just keep going until you know you've gotten everything at least once. Do you see how it's already got that one area? Yeah. Yeah, I'm making a tutorial. Say hi to my mom. No, no. Stop <laughs> What? Yeah. They see me when I'm worse. I Not very often. I need to finish your closet. Can I finish this first? Okay. So you just take more paint and you just keep doing that until they're all covered, but because I don't know how to edit and you know all of that on my maker yet, you guys just get to watch the first part of me painting. So I usually like to do one side. I don't do the legs or anything, I just paint the barrel and the neck and really try to use your paint most efficiently and don't make it really thick because then you'll waste a bunch of paint. And you just keep painting away. Once I'm done, the once I've reached the 10 minute mark, I'll stop paint. I'll stop recording, but I'll finish painting both. I'll keep painting until he's pure black, and then and then I'll come back. So. You don't want it too thin because then you can't tell where you've because then you can't exactly tell where you've already painted. But there an advantage of painting it really thin is you don't really have to worry about brush strokes later on. I've learned. That's how I did my other guy. The more the layers, it's okay if you have to do lots of layers because it makes it smoother. So because this main and tail are already black, I won't have to worry about painting them as much as when their main and tails are like white and you're making them black. So where he's already etched will just be a bit rougher than the rest because you've already disrupted the paint or plastic or whatever you want to call it. So I always like to start on the neck because it's I find it one of the easiest places to paint the horse. So, any comments, Melanie? No, no. I'm eating a cookie. Oh, and our guest star is eating a cookie. Uh, oh. Is it a good cookie? Eating a cookie and looking at potato. Is it a good cookie? It is a good cookie. Chocolate chip cookie. Jealous. You, honey. Oh. you know what I had last night? What? M and M cookies. Mm -hmm. The professional in a bag M and M cookies. I was last night. So yeah. Okay, uh, that was from the point of view of the camera while I was trying to paint that. So, like I said, it won't be very thick at first, but but a thick first layer is usually very wasteful. This is probably the 
thinnest layer I've done on a horse because I can barely tell I'm painting in black. But, you know, that's okay. You just want to use the most paint, I mean the least amount of paint to cover the most amount of area in my case because it's very efficient, works very well. Just wait, I'm going to wind up finishing the first layer in during the video. So yeah, just So that's basically, I will make you guys sit here and watch yourself, but that's basically how much I've got done already in just the time of doing the tutorial, and it should dry fairly fast, like this is already dry. So, let me pick up the camera and I'll show you what I've done. Yeah. So, that's all for my, for right now guys, so bye!